Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. So it's my pleasure to welcome Zeb Farbman, who is a graduate student at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. And uh, he's here at Microsoft as an intern this summer. Uh, and he's also giving a talk at SIGGRAPH next week about some research he did with us last summer. So he's going to present a dry run of the talk. We're not going to take any questions for the first 20 minutes while he's speaking. Um, after that, we'll have 10 minutes for questions and uh, debugging comments. Go ahead. Okay, so hello everybody. Um, today I would like to tell you about uh, some recent work that we have been doing on uh, edge preserving decompositions for a multi-scale tone and detail manipulation. It's a joint work with uh, Ranan Fatal, Dani Lushinsky and Rick Zeliski. So let me start by reminding you what is an edge preserving decomposition. This is a process where you take an image and apply an edge-preserving smoothing filter to obtain a piecewise smooth version of the, uh, the image where small details have been removed but the, the strong edges still remain. Now, if you subtract the smooth version from the original, we obtain a residual image containing all those uh, fine details that have been removed by the smoothing operation. These two images are often referred to as uh, base and uh, detail layers. Such decomposition are used by virtually dozens of recent computational photography techniques uh, such as tone mapping, high dynamic range, uh, image editing, image abstraction, etc. Most of these techniques uh, rely on the bilateral filter to do the edge preserving smoothing. And in this paper, we advocate an alternative approach based on the weighted least square optimization framework. We'll see that the filter based on this framework gives us better control over the spatial scale of the features that end up in the detail layer. Also, in many applications, we would like to operate on details at a variety of scales rather than just at a single scale. And here's an example for such a scenario. Suppose we have this uh, nice uh, landscape photo and we would like to make it punchier and emphasize the, the details a bit. So by manipulating details at a finer scale, they get uh, this effect, but we can get very different effect by uh, manipulating details at some other scale, medium or a coarse. In practice, uh, a photographer would most likely to combine together the result of detail manipulation at all those scales uh, to get some, maybe something like this result. And this type of manipulation is exactly the kind of thing that our multi-scale decompositions are good for. So now that, have, now that we have covered the motivation uh, for our work, we can go a bit deeper into this whole issue of uh, edge-preserving filtering. And let's start by reminding ourselves what are our expectations from uh, an ideal edge-preserving operator. What we need to do is to be able to smooth the signal while preserving the shape of the significant change in the signal and then cleanly extract the details at a given scale which then can be manipulated and recombined with the base to yield the result. When performing the smoothing, it is important to avoid blurring of the strong edges since this introduces ringing into the detail layer and may result in halos once the base and the details are recombined. Trying to use a piecewise constant segmentation in order to extract the detail layer is also not so, so a good idea as a it will over-sharpen, say, the edges and may cause thin gradient reversal artifacts near the strong edges. Of course, there is an extensive amount of uh, previous work in the field of uh, edge-preserving filters, and we will address it really briefly by mentioning the methods that were or are still used for uh, computational uh, photography-related tasks that uh, require base uh, detail separation. Okay, and one of the earlier edge-aware filters was an isotropic diffusion. Originally, it was not devised as a base detail separation method, but more as a technique to facilitate the early vision algorithms such as uh, edge detection and the uh, image segmentation. In this context, over-sharpening actually may be considered a desirable feature, but make it less suitable for uh, detail extraction. 
Also, its iterative setup sometimes results in uh, somewhat slower performance. And because of these reasons, anisotropic diffusion has not been used much in the computational photography. And uh, currently, the bilateral filter is the most common edge preserving filter in computer graphics. Okay, so let's remind ourselves how it works. Uh, applying the bilateral filter on image I at point P uh, basically amounts to computing a weighted average of the surrounding pixels Q. The actual weight of uh, each surrounding pixel Q is determined by both the spatial distance of pixel Q from P and their difference in intensity. Because of this, the image is, is uh, filtered with the spatially varying kernel, which is able to preserve strong edges. The shape of the kernel is controlled by two parameters, the special fall of parameter sigma s and the range fall of parameter sigma r. This works reasonably well as long as the smoothing is fairly mild. For example, this is what we get with the fairly small uh, set of parameters. You can see that the texture has been become smoother, but not the salient edges, which is good. Uh, but now if we try to remove larger scale details, for example, if we try to get rid of the texture on the statues, we'll find that it's quite difficult to do. Okay, so as you can see in the sequence here, if we increase only the spatial support of the filter, sigma s, some small scale details simply refuse to go away and sometimes even reappear, especially near the strong edges. This may appear counterintuitive at first, but the reason is that by increasing sigma s, each pixel will tend to find more and more distant pixels with the similar values, and those pixels will uh, dominate the weighted average. So in order to achieve a more aggressive smoothing, it is necessary to increase uh, the range parameter, sigma r as well, but this ultimately causes even some of the stronger edges to become blurry, and yet some small scale details still remain unfiltered. And of course, in the limit, increasing sigma r makes the bilateral filter behave increasingly more like a linear filter. So to summarize, in order to produce progressively coarser images with the bilateral filter, we need to increase sigma r, which tends to blur some of the edges that we probably would like to preserve. And as we already mentioned, the blurring introduces halos. So for example, suppose we want to boost the details in this image. If we extract the medium scale details with the bilateral filter and try to boost them, we get an image with the hello artifacts. And this is something that the photographers really don't like to see in their images, at least uh, without having the control over it. So one possible way to overcome the problems with the bilateral filter is to build upon the fact that it's quite effective when kernels are small and conservative, and instead of trying to do all the smoothing in one iteration, uh, we can try to apply it in an in iterative manner. In each step, applying small kernel on the result of the previous iteration. So this was the main idea in uh, Fatal et al. work uh, from the last seagraph, and uh, let's just look at the results of this method. It produces uh, a more uh, effective image coarsening, But notice that some small scale details remain even in the coarsest levels. It also oversharpens some of the edges, which as we have been already mentioned, can uh, cause a thin gradient reversal artifacts near the edges. Another alternative is the trilateral filter. It's governed by signal parameter sigma c, and let's just see what happens when we change this parameter. It managed to filter out most of the fine scale detail, but introduces a variety of strong artifacts near the edges. Okay, finally, after this uh, very long prologue, we get to the approach that we advocate, which is the use of the weighted least squares optimization framework to perform an edge preserving smoothing. Okay, informally speaking, what we do is the following. Given an input image G, we seek a new image U, which on one hand is as close as possible to G especially near the strong edges, and at the same time is as smooth as possible elsewhere. Let's try to make it uh, a little bit more formal. Uh, for simplicity, let's switch to 1D for now. Okay, and for the similarity between the original signal G and the result U can be obtained by minimizing the following expression. Square of U minus G at each point P. 
clearly the, clearly the result here is uh, simply u equals g and in order to get edge preserving smoothing we need to add the, the smoothness requirement as well. Rather simple smoothness requirement would be to minimize the squares of the first derivative of u so let's revise uh, our problem accordingly. This gives us a much smoother result but not a very edge preserving one since the smoothness requirement applies uh, everywhere. So in order to make it work, we should add the last part of our requirement, uh, of our intuition, and it is the fact we do not need u to be smooth everywhere. Across significant edges in G, we can relax this requirement. Our way to convey this intuition is to add a per pixel map A, which should have a high, way, a high weight away from the edges and low weight across the edges. The per pixel map A could take many different forms. Probably one of the simplest is uh, to make it equal to the inverse of the derivative of G raised in some power alpha. Uh, epsilon simply takes care of uh, zero division. So now in places where the derivative of G is large, we get a low weight on the smoothness term and U is forced to be more similar to G at this point. Okay, so that's our function. Now, by uh, minimizing it, we hope to achieve an edge-preserving smoothing. Okay, now let's switch back from uh, 1D signal to 2D images. Things stay pretty much the same, except that instead of minimizing the derivative of U, we'd like to minimize the partial derivatives in both uh, x and u directions at each pixel p. We also would like to add uh, a factor lambda, which will balance between the smoothness requirement and the similarity requirement. By increasing the lambda, we can make the result progressively smoother. The exact connection between the parameter lambda and the degree of smoothing can be hard to analyze uh, because we can't immediately apply a linear filter theory since our operator is specially variant. But uh, using the fact that away from the strong edges our operator very much resembles a spatially invariant operator, we can figure out uh, some interesting connections and more details on this can be found in the paper. Okay, so in order to find u, the, we need to minimize this expression and since this is a quadratic form in u, we can compute u by solving this linear system where L of A is a non-homogeneous Laplacian matrix. Those uh, coefficients depend on the input image. In other words, we have a closed form solution for u. Okay, that pretty much sums up the exposition of the edge-preserving operator. Uh, now, the decomposition constructed in a way that is very similar to that of the Laplacian, regular Laplacian pyramid. We can either apply our operator on the original image multiple times with different lambda parameters each time, or apply the smoothing operator iteratively. The iterative scheme is useful when, when we are interested in uh, aggressive smoothing and detail removal and not too concerned about uh, other sharpening. Regardless of how we computed the course and version of the image, the detail layers are simply defined as a difference or ratios between two subsequent levels. And this is how the final multi-scale decomposition can look like. Of course, the exact setup is uh, very application dependent. Now, we have the decomposition. Let's see what kind of stuff we can do with it. Okay, then the, we implemented a number of uh, simple tools that use our decomposition for things like contrast manipulation, high dynamic range, uh, tone mapping, detail enhancement, and image abstraction. The purpose of these tools is uh, to demonstrate what, that one can easily improve the results of the existing applications by simply switching to the weighted least squares based filtering. Okay, and let's start with the multi-scale contrast manipulation. And here is our simple tool for manipulating local contrast at uh, different scales based on our multi-scale decomposition. Once, the, once the, the decomposition has been computed, the different layers can be manipulated at the uh, interactive rates. Note that the manipulation range is very wide. It takes an extreme manipulation to cause the artifacts to appear. 
Manipulative medium detail layer can adapt to image, while coarse detail manipulation is uh, closer to global contrast adjustment. And of course, we can combine adjustments of all detail layers to visually pleasing final result. Those of you who are familiar with the Adobe Photoshop or other similar tools know that we can achieve a local contrast adjustment with unsharp masking, which actually can be thought of as a detail boosting where we have a regular low pass filter for a base detail separation. So it's interesting to compare between these two and on this slide you can see the result of the unsharp masking and here's the result of a weighted least square base contrast enhancement. You probably can see that away from the strong edges, pre things pretty much uh, similar, but in the vicinity of the strong edges, unsharp masking is prone to halos, which we can avoid with the weighted least square smoothing. Another application is a detail exaggeration from a Fatal et al. paper. The idea is to combine details from a collection of images uh, which have been taken under a different light conditions in order to create single image rich with details. Upon close inspection in the original Fatal et al. results, we can find thin gradient reversal artifacts that can be attributed to oversharpening in their filter. Those can be avoided by simply switching to weighted least square filtering. Another thing is that while the original results are produced by uh, combining the detailed layers from number of images. Here we demonstrate that in some cases we can generate highly exaggerated the detail even from a single input image rather than three multi-light images uh, like in Fatality work. Weighted least square smoothing are easily harnessed to perform a detail preserving a compression of a high dynamic range images. For example, we can simply replace the bilateral filter and the tone mapping algorithm by Durand and Dorsey uh, with the weighted least square based smoothing and avoid the mild halo artifacts that are sometimes visible in their results. So in their original result you may spot some halos near the picture frames and the light fixture. Those pretty much disappear when you simply switch uh, the underlying filtering from uh, bilateral filter to weighted least squares. Let's see it again. The bilateral filter smoothing and here's the weighted least square smoothing. Another option we experimented with to use the tone mapping algorithm proposed by Tamblin and Torg replaced their LCS based multi-scale decomposition with the, our weighted least square based decomposition. Here the goal was to achieve a rather flat image with exaggerated local contrasts. Again, upon close inspection you can see that uh, with the weighted least squares you have uh, less artifacts. And uh, here we went after a more photographic look by maintaining stronger contrasts at uh, coarser scales. Of course, we can also use the weighted least square framework for image abstraction, where the details are suppressed rather than enhanced. Doing this at uh, different scales produces different degrees of abstraction, which may be combined together in a spatially varying manner to provide more details in uh, areas of interest. Okay, and uh, here's another example to demonstrate the progressive image abstraction with the weighted least square framework. Okay, so to sum up, uh, the multi-scale edge preserving decomposition based on the weighted least square framework suffer less from some of the drawbacks of the bilateral filter and other approaches. It allows small features to gracefully fade in magnitude without introducing significant blurring. In future work, we would like to investigate more sophisticated schemes for determining the smoothing coefficients for the weighted least square formulation in order to further improve the ability to extract uh, details uh, while preserving the edges. And another important issue mu that must be tackled is the uh, better handling of color. Uh, our current manage our uh, tone management tool currently uses uh, the LED color space and we have notes that uh, after strong manipulation uh, the perceived color is uh, quite different. Okay, so that's all and uh, thank you.